So when we look at gas laws and describing the behavior of gas molecules, there are a few different variables we have to consider. And understanding these variables is the first step to understanding the gas laws and being able to describe the behavior of gas molecules correctly. The different variables we have to consider are pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. If you are familiar with the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, you might recognize these variables. If you need help with the ideal gas law, make sure to check out our video. But it would be best to watch this video first so you understand each variable fully before diving into the ideal gas law. So let's start with pressure. Pressure in chemistry can be defined as the force exerted per unit area. A force is just a push or a pull. And for us in chemistry, we will think of it mainly as a push. Gas molecules have a lot of energy and they move around a lot. Because of this, they will collide with each other and with the inside surface of whatever container they are in. When these collisions occur, that is a force being applied. This is why gas molecules have certain pressures, whereas solids and liquids do not. The more collisions that occur with the gas molecules, the more force they apply. This results in a higher pressure. We can measure pressure in different units. Some of the units you'll see is atmospheres, which we abbreviate ATM, pascals, which we abbreviate using PA, kilopascals, which is abbreviated KPA, and millimeters of mercury, which is abbreviated MMHG. We also use TOR and BAR for pressure in other scenarios. All of these units are used for slightly different reasons and with slightly different scenarios in chemistry. However, the important thing to know about these units is that they all represent units for pressure. This will help you in solving gas law problems because it will help you know what variable to use in the equation. Now let's look at volume. Simply put, volume is just how much space the gas occupies. The more space it takes up, the higher the volume, and the less space it takes up, the lower the volume. Common units for volume when we look at gas laws are liters, abbreviated with L, or milliliters, abbreviated ML. You might also see cube units like meters cubed or centimeters cubed, but these are less common. Just like with pressure, the important thing to note here is the different units that can be used to express volume because that can help you pick out the volume numbers or variables from the problems when you solve them. Now, when it comes to temperature, it is important to remember that temperature is not how hot or cold something is. Temperature is a measure of the kinetic energy or the motion of the particles. Higher temperature means the particles are moving faster and lower temperature means the particles are moving slower. If you need a refresher on temperature, make sure to check out our video. In chemistry, the units we will use for temperature will either be degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Remember, we do not use Fahrenheit in science. The final unit that is important when looking at gas laws is moles. Remember that moles is the SI unit for the amount of a substance. One mole is equal to Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And one mole is also equal to the molar mass of the substance. If you need a refresher on moles, make sure to check out our video. The only unit we have for moles is moles. So unlike the other variables where there can be different units to represent the same thing, moles only has one unit. And again, this is important because it will help you identify the correct numbers to use in the problem and plugging them into the right variable when we solve each equation. So let's put this all together in a nice table. There are four units that are important to know when looking at gas laws. Those units are pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. The units that we can use for each variable are shown here in the table. And again, the reason is it important to know each variable and the specific units is so that when you are solving gas law problems, you are able to identify the values that are given to you and you can plug them in for the correct variables in each equation correctly. For example, if a problem gave you a value of 2.5 ATM or 2.5 atmospheres, you need to know that that is pressure. The way that I know this is pressure is because the units they are giving me are ATM, which is a unit for pressure. If you mistake 2.5 for volume, then you're going to plug in 2.5 for the wrong variable and end up solving the problem incorrectly. Knowing the variables for the gas laws and the units for each variable is the first step to successfully solving gas law problems. If you found this video helpful, here's another video to check out. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel as we produce content to make science simple.